yeah, it's a different game and really I just played it because something different. Um, probably didn't have to practice as much and I put the time in anyway. Um, but you'd meet different players and there's different strategies of the game um, and different countries to play in, play in. So that was my motivation and to try and win these different titles if I could on the way. Uh, so it was a, made the adventure keep going basically. Uh, pool played in all sorts of countries around the world. Got to see over the last 10 years a lot of uh, different places and different characters, a lot more uh, way out characters I'd say at pool. Uh, but everybody's different and uh, that's what makes the world go around. Uh, so I enjoyed the challenge of that. Uh, your question on the mindset, well one thing's for sure in billiards, snooker and pool at the top level, your mindset should be not to make one error because at the top level if you make one mistake, not just in one frame or one game, you might not have another chance in the whole match. So eliminate errors is the main thing but the strategies are different. Um, with a lot more balls, uh, there's a lot more variations to some uh, degree in pool. So you need a lot more shots in the way you play them with side position and know the angles. The best pool players, um, they know those angles so well uh, to come off two cushions, pop the ball, get out of snookers and leave it safe. I, I really couldn't believe it when I first started. Uh, I respect every different Q sport player. The billiards will stand you in good stead for uh, the other Q sports. Um, probably going back to the practice question, but the only thing is in snooker, in billiards, sorry, uh, the long potting isn't so essential. So uh, that's a that's a difference. Uh, pull you have to practice those side spin shots um, to get position, as I was saying. Uh, but generally you've got to practice at any Q sport. But I did learn from my previous mistakes and not practice much uh, beforehand. Uh, so I was fresh for the tournaments and uh, that did make a difference. So if I could get through the early rounds, uh, probably make a, used to have a good run for a while and uh, get to the final stages and do some damage. Uh, but once again, uh, pool. You've got to think a bit more of the different shots that come up and think ahead just like billiards, but in billiards it will, it's sort of, you get more patterns generally. But even though I said there's more variety in the uh, pool shots, there's not as much variety in the scoring shots uh, of billiards. So there's differences and enjoyable aspects of each game. What was a highlight of a in my career because uh, I was very honoured that I was made the ambassador of the World Billiards Championship that year and uh, we got a lot of PR in the main press and that uh, is not always the case in, uh, in English billiards so that was great. Um, just to, by the way in India we really did get a lot of PR and people wouldn't believe it on the front and the back pages of papers and we've got a couple of articles on the back there. Uh, they were great times. But the World Billiards Championship in 2019, the organisation was fantastic and they, I suppose I couldn't resist having a go even though I hadn't played billiards uh, competitively for quite a while. Um, but it was great to see all the players there and the standards so, real, so good, um, uh, unbelievable and uh, the passion that English billiard players do have uh, is fantastic and I always say to anybody in the games, um, you know, if you play English billiards, you'll always play it, whereas snooker pool players might drop off because of the intricacies of the game. Um, and uh, that's why it's such a great game because you can keep learning uh, for a long time. My own personal, come back was, um, I was very hesitant because I hadn't played and I didn't want to put in a bad performance and as it turns out I had a frozen shoulder too so I was on painkillers so I wouldn't say, I was practicing a lot so I didn't learn from my mistakes and I was practicing and starting to make some big breaks or big-ish breaks before the tournament but um, anyway 
the, uh, that didn't didn't really work out too well for me in terms of performance, even though I got pretty well into the tournament uh, in ends of it. But anyway, it was great to see everybody and to see billiards flourish in, at the RACV club. They uh, organise events there, and we even have uh, 50 players in the members. Uh, event so it was great to see billiards and uh, my thoughts basically were um, see uh, Peter Gilchrist win it you know great play uh, Causia he's a freak still when uh, when I first saw him Mike Russell and I were watching him and we thought he's fluking position with his uh, all round play um, uh, but after a few months, we realised he's playing a lot of those shots. So he, he's a he's a great player. So and there's a few younger players coming up, which is great too. Uh, always always good to be involved in billiards, but unfortunately, there's just not enough time in the day for all these sort of things. Uh, there's other aspects to life, but it was great to be there and uh, commentate and look at the uh, the fantastic old game of English billiards. Well, in reference to my proudest moment in uh, in my victories, very hard to say. Any win's a great win. Um, just wondering which one it is. It's just too hard to say. Your first tournament victory, a uh, national title, the Australian Championship, beating George Gannon was a thrill. But I suppose the one tournament was the World Professional Billiards Championship. It was on BBC TV, got a lot of coverage, but the history of it was even more important since uh, uh, the first Australian, since Walter Lindrum to win it. But even more than that, the, it's the oldest professional sporting trophy and there wasn't many names on it, to be honest, for the victories, you know, because there was lots of runs of uh, great players winning it. Um, and uh, obviously Lindrum held it for a long time. Um, but in that regard too, being the youngest player uh, in the 1900s to win it up till then um, uh, was an inspiration to a, probably a few other uh, players you, you would have heard of after that uh, and the WPBSA promoted it a bit more as a young person's sport so I suppose I'm proud of that um, but overall looking back it's a, it was a body of work really winning those variety of titles was um, just as important to me, the World Professional, the World Match Play, the World IBSF and the UK and the Australian uh, Billiards Championships um, made it complete for me and uh, you know throw in the snooker titles um, and the pool titles, um, I'm all pretty proud of it of course I've stuffed up along the way a lot of the time because I've played for a long time. But overall, um, really thank all the people that um, helped me, my parents and uh, Murdo Donahue. And a lot of people in England when I first came over looked after me quite a lot. Mark Wildman, then uh, there was a guy, Eddie McNicholas in Widnes, um, my, uh, in Scotland, uh, the Miller Group, that was great and uh, Joe Nugent and then David Atak who was my manager and when I went to the uh, Midlands good old Graham Miles uh, helped me out uh, as well so uh, uh, so happy to meet all those sort of people. Well all I can say is look from my own experience you need a good coach or somebody to tell you how to play. In billiards especially it's very hard to see what the right shot is uh, because if, if the position changes a little bit on the table, you play another shot and there's little touches of side, uh, you can go for weeks and years trying to find out the right thing. I wrote a letter to Murdo Donoghue, he lived in Sydney, he wrote one back and nearly, well half the time I'd make a bigger break the next day when I got that letter, uh, just through the knowledge and the confidence. So get a good coach and practice the basics uh, the basics, what I mean by is the basic shots of billiards and the basic cueing. Because without those two things, you can't make consistent big breaks. So that's my advice uh, on uh, improving your performance quickly. Well, firstly, let me say that um, 
if uh, I, I wouldn't want to change anything in billiards if the world would allow us but the world's got faster people aren't patient um, and the skills of the game are hidden so it's not user friendly uh, even though if more people knew about it just like snooker nowadays then they could watch longer matches appreciate not just a uh, hundred break but the tactical play and so forth so uh, even though I'm a traditionalist I'll put a couple of thoughts out there one is how about having some soft music in the background where people are playing in snooker uh, halls or clubs uh, Maybe it'll attract a few younger players to look at the game and so they can talk in the background and you won't be put off. Um, must say from my pool experience, uh, didn't worry me if there was music playing, but in snooker or billiards, if one silly person takes a flash or just a camera shot or has one word when it's dead silent, it's much more off-putting. So I'd try that. I think... Uh, the traditionalists might have to give way a bit, but it'll help the game. The other thing is, uh, I recall from the World Match Play, it was a very short game. We had more than one broad court climb crossing, so it could fit into the TV. Um, you know, quick games uh, format. Uh, so I'd probably keep these ball climb crossings even more. Um, and also maybe change the rules to one pot off the spot. Anything to mix it up because the beauty of billiards is the different scoring games, uh, sorry, scoring shots. So that's what you need, the variety uh, to keep it interesting. But people have to appreciate how good all these shots are. The other issue is if you, you make it look too easy, uh, people don't appreciate it. So they need the knowledge, uh, but there's a few thoughts for you. It's not easy with all the different sports. I forgot to mention years ago when I was growing up, that's why I had a lot of PR with, when I won the World uh, Championship. There's only about five main sports in Australia. We had AFL, cricket, uh, golf, tennis. After that, snooker, uh, basketball, and I even level. Now, there's a whole lot more to compete with. But if anybody asks me, it is one of the greatest games on earth, that's for sure. Robbie Polkari of Australia beats Deep Seti of India by four games to two to become strong world match play billiards champion.